Hey everybody, welcome to all of you joining. We have three formats here. So welcome all of you to our Natural Health News Live show. I am actually not mic'd up for YouTube. Hold on one second. It's been kind of chaotic here. Let's see, here we are. Good morning. Hello YouTube, sorry about that. Okay, so welcome to all of you to the Natural Health News Live show for all of you new joining, welcome. I hope you will follow, subscribe, like, and share this video. And today we're going to be talking about um, some latest CDC, some additions to the symptoms um, to look for if uh, you think you, you or a family member might have uh, COVID-19. And we're also going to be talking about one of the most important at-home medical devices, and it comes in a cute little carrying kit and basically a pulse ox is going to be what we talk about today because I really honestly feel like this is going to be such a great resource and tool for you if you do have it or if you end up coming down with it and just to monitor your oxygen levels knowing that this primarily addresses the respiratory system. So welcome to all of you joining. We have Facebook new. So welcome Facebook. This is going to be a live show that I do Saturday and Sunday. Um, Monday through Friday, Gabriel has my mini iPad. So on the weekends, I get it and you guys can join me for this uh, Natural Health News Show. So before we get kicked off, I want to uh, first toast to everybody. We've made it through, I think we are going on week six. So welcome and cheers to all of you. I made a green smoothie actually with our sponsor, Vegetox. Vegetox is a wonderful super greens. I want to mention them because you guys know I love my greens. I love green powders and they actually have eight powerful superfoods in their uh, blend and they have a little recipe on the back. I altered the recipe a little bit and I actually use oat milk and some uh, coconut almond milk as well as just a banana and blueberries and then the green powder from this, it, it's so powerful. So I wanna list for you the, um, the ingredients that they have. So it has wheatgrass, and if you are like me and weekly you get wheatgrass juice shots at your local green juice uh, vendor, you're feeling a little, uh, <laughs> a little deprived. So I'm back into my wheatgrass juice. So I have wheatgrass juice, barley, grass, chlorella, spirulina, that's so powerful. Moringa, you guys know I've talked a lot about the Tree of Life and the Moringa benefits on our heart health and our, our just stress levels and it's a very good immune regulator as well. And then it has maca, that'll balance stress. It has camu camu and bao bao. Fabulous stuff. So I want to thank the uh, Vegetox Super Greens company for sponsoring this video. Let's give them a thumbs up. You can find them on um, the link down below. Um, this is actually manufactured in the UK and oh, it's so fantastic. It tastes honestly better than any green powder I've ever gotten here in the US. So mm. cheers to us for surviving the quarantine mode. So welcome, the recipe. So where you buy it, um, it is, I posted it on, um, on YouTube in the description box, Facebook, I'll come, come back. Um, and Instagram if you want to DM me, but um, you go to www.vegatox, V-E-G-A-T-O-X.com, and it does come through customs. This was really delivered pretty quickly for us, uh, considering the fact that quarantine is kind of slowing things down. But, okay, so here, the recipe, I'll give you this recipe, because green juice is very healing, very powerful. Um, I did a, a, a very healthy scoop. So they say teaspoon. I actually did a little bit more. I, I go a little little intense on my greens because I really feel like now more than ever I need green green juice. And we actually missed our delivery of our regular CSA provider. So I didn't get my a lot of my greens this week. Um, so I did actually a tablespoon, healthy dose, um, about a cup of, um, it, it's a, about a cup and a half in total of liquid. Um, I used what I had left of my oat milk, which was about half a cup. And then a combination, I have a, a coconut um, and almond milk combo um, that has some extra proteins and stuff in that. So I added a cup of that. And then literally like, I have a banana that's kind of 
close to going bad. I put half a banana. I had blueberries um, in my freezer and actually my blueberry bushes is, is um, coming up pretty soon. But I grabbed a big handful of blueberries and then the green powder and that's it. And it's really delicious. Mm. So again, I want to thank them. They are bringing this content live to you all. And without our sponsors, this is challenging in this world where YouTube's censoring, Facebook hasn't censored, but YouTube censoring, Amazon's cutting all their uh, affiliate programs, and it's just it's just challenging. So our sponsors allow me to bring this content to you. So I'm grateful. Um, so let's go over some news. First of all, with Facebook, all of you joining, thank you for, for tuning in. Um, my normal rig for you all, I didn't get a screw for um, this like setup that I had. So you guys are kind of set up a little bit differently than what I had planned. Um, but just so you know, the format of the live show and for all of you new joining, this is how it goes. I go over health news, statistics, data about um, the current state of the virus, numbers, uh, where states are, highlights from uh, just, you know, news, any of the uh, research or clinical um, information that could be impactful for you all making healthy decisions for you and your families. And then I go into the second part of it is specific to some way to keep you and your family healthy and safe during our, you know, this time of quarantine, self, you know, social distancing, self-isolation. Um, and today the topic will be about how to use or a device that I really think everybody needs to have. And we'll go over this a little bit uh, further. And um, particularly it's, it's highlighted by the CDC um, the new edition of symptoms that they added. Um, so anyway, let's dig into the news, friends. Okay, so uh, the U.S. is at 927,000 cases that have been tested um, and they have tested positive. Um, again, testing is not where it needs to be. And out of the 927,000 cases, we are now at 52,400 fatalities. That makes up a quarter of the global uh, death toll. Obviously, the U.S. is leading the world um, in the cases of this. It's just out of control here in the States. Um, and even with the lack of testing, you know, some people are saying we need to be testing 750,000 people up to 2 million a day. We're not even doing that in a span of two or three weeks. So um, I'm watching numbers. Uh, New Jersey... Uh, did surpass 100,000 yesterday. They were really close. They were at 102,196 cases. Massachusetts crossed the 50,000 threshold. So Massachusetts is on the way up. California is at 39. Florida, you know, I grew up in Florida. I'm always watching them. They um, had over 1,000 cases logged yesterday. They are now over 30,000. And Georgia... George is just being crazy. Yesterday, you could get your hair, nails, and done. Hair, nails, hair, and nails done. You could get a massage, and you could grab, you know, get a new tattoo. So I'm sure there's probably people grabbing or ordering up coronavirus tattoos. Totally unsafe. Um, I spoke with a PT uh, therapist friend of mine, who, you know, was like, "What are, what are your thoughts?" And she said, "I'm not opening my clinics." And you know, I said, "Same here." In terms of you know, seeing patients and the challenge we both uh, concurred was that even getting orders for PPE, it just is not easy, you know, and uh, hospitals are lacking this. How are we, we're in the medical field, but how is a barber shop or a massage therapist going to get that equipment, let alone the cleaning supplies? So there are some very, it's not very well thought out in terms of the rollout here. Hopefully all of your states, if you guys are watching from another state, will learn and hopefully roll out better. But, um, you know, there are requirements on business owners to get certain materials and cleaning supplies with challenges, the supply and demand, it's very, very hard. So anyway, I just want to put that out there. Um, I have to take a quick little swig. This is my morning breakfast today. Okay, so let's talk about, um, nursing homes. So nursing homes are definitely seeing um, a major you know, uh, brunt. They're bearing the brunt of this in a multitude of ways. We're seeing greater instances of cases, clusters in nursing homes. We're also seeing the healthcare uh, workers 
being, um, one, they're not equipped with, uh, one, the medical resources. They're not hospitals or nursing home facilities. Um, two, they don't have all the PPE required. They haven't had that from the beginning. And um, even still to this day, they're, they're being challenged with the protection. Something that we are not totally tuned into is that if a nursing home patient moves, you know, they get so severe, they move from a nursing home to the hospital and they are released by the hospital, the nursing home has to take them back. And we already know that in, even though you get released from the hospital, you can still be shedding the virus and still be contagious. That's posing a challenge in the nursing home world. And there's actually a case right now uh, for Facebook. I've been highlighting a little bit. Um, we're going to start to see more lawsuits, uh, legal action happening as it relates to um, companies, healthcare facilities, states, uh, countries, <laughs> you know, airlines. I mean, the, it, the, the lawsuits are happening in terms of the liability for the, the employees and, and even uh, their, mostly their civil suits. So there's a, a nursing, um, a, a CNA in a home in New Jersey. So this is based in New Jersey. A CNA, her family actually filed it. A CNA died um, from the virus because there was a gentleman who was in their home, had the virus, he moved to the hospital, got the care, recovered, and was then released. Well, they had to, state laws, they have to take them back. Um, and the CNA's family filed suit against the um, company that owns the nursing homes. And that, and the basis is um, she was exposed, she wasn't provided the right equipment. So this is something that we're gonna have to monitor and assess. The other thing to note right now, we have um, data that 20% of healthcare professionals are, are testing positive with the virus. Um, that's pretty significant in terms of, you know, two out of every 10 medical professionals are going to be, the likelihood is that they'll have they'll test positive. Well, one of the challenges is, if, let's say your ER, there could be anywhere from 15 to 35 people in that space, and these 20% 20, 20 of them might end up having not just exposure, but they they might come down and test positive with the virus. So that's a challenge on a lot of different fronts. Um, but the other thing that I wanted to highlight is that the World Health Organization came out, um, they released, actually it was, it's today, it was early this morning in Europe. Um, they came out with a statement saying that there is no evidence that if you test positive, and you know, recover from coronavirus, um, and you show antibodies to this virus, that does not mean that you're protected. And their statement was to my mention, yeah, I think it was yesterday. Yesterday, um, I mentioned, was it yesterday or the day before? It was the day before, two days ago, I mentioned the Delta CEO had in, been interviewed on CNBC, and his comment was um, that they, it was very, general and it you know there's a lot of backstory potentially to it but his comment was that um you know there may be a situation where traveling might require an immunity passport okay so the world health organization actually said uh, and warned against immunity papers that you know just because we're looking at potentially better testing in terms of the antibody testing that that will potentially show a lot of us were probably asymptomatic and, and have antibodies or had some degree of exposure, but didn't demonstrate symptoms. And then by the way, we're gonna go over new symptoms to look out for because a lot of folks are showcasing certain symptoms that aren't necessarily lung respiratory related. Um, so the World Health Organization really wants people to be cognizant that just because the antibodies, antibody t testing is coming out that our bodies might show antibodies, that does not guarantee or mean we are now immune. So that whole idea of herd immunity, also we need to table that because we just don't have any evidence right now that antibodies minimize your risk of exposing yourself again or having it again. I reported about, and I wanna go back, this is like my, my notebook of every every show, every report. I, go, I wanna go back to, it was like a week or so ago, Seoul, Korea was showing um, that there were, uh, let's see here. Seoul, Korea showed um, 
it was something pretty phenomenal that there were cases that were coming back. Um, they had tested positive, recovered, and then they came back and were testing positive again. And it was substantial. It was like 20 or 40%. Um, I can't find it now. But, you know, that is something we need to be aware of. The whole, and, and that really scared a lot of people. I had a lot of you comment, oh my gosh, the immunity passport, like, what the heck? What does that mean? So just know that that is, um, the World Health Organization is cautioning against that. So I wanted to take a quick pause. Please hit the like button if you guys are liking this over on Facebook. Same on Instagram, particularly on YouTube. I really appreciate that. Um, and then also, um, if you want to share specifically details um, to friends and family, this is quite helpful, especially on Facebook. That helps um, create more, more awareness on this, this matter. Um, the other thing that I want to highlight that we're going to hear more of is that there is a uh, food, food crisis in the world of um, food manufacturing, but even further than that, um, growers of food, the dairy, you know, farmers, dairy, um, I don't even know what they call them. And I have family in this category. Um, Angie, I, Angie, one of my cousins is watching. Angie, what do we call our, like the Mullen boys um, that do the, they have the, they, they have cows that they milk. Uh, dairy, dairy farmers, I guess is what we call them. Um, but all of the food, there's a disconnect right now. There are farmers that are looking at potentially having to plow their foods or, or their, their plow their fields that are fresh and ready for food production or food picking. And yet the customers, the, um, the amount of, uh, you know, their buyers have dried up. So some might sell direct to restaurants. Well, restaurants aren't open. Um, so that is going to be a challenge and we're starting to see that their cries to uh, the federal government for help to turn uh, the switch to moving food instead of to the restaurants to these food banks. We're seeing a massive explosion of people heading towards food banks that literally don't have food and it is heartbreaking and heart-wrenching that this is a basic requirement um, and the requirement and necessity of food we have food being produced by people and yet there's there's a gap between getting it to the people who need it um, and I, I've heard some horrible cases of you know pig farmers they they had to euthanize they didn't have to but they they chose to euthanize little baby pigs you know I am not vegan or vegetarian by any means but I definitely lean that way and we don't eat any pork in our family and it just breaks my heart. So um, it also breaks my heart that like in Texas, there's 10,000 families that line up on a weekly basis to get food, basic requirements. Um, same up in New York and it's all over the US and, and also we're going to be seeing this also all over the world. So I wanna put that news out there. Um, okay, so I wanna go over some additions. So the CDC, okay, and I know you guys are, <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of feed hate on the World Health Organization and the CDC. It, them being what they are, regardless of your thoughts, they are thought leaders and they have clinicians and scientists that are some of the best experts in the world. So I, I don't want you to completely disregard everything that's coming out of there. We and, and as to yesterday's video, I have to remind each and every one of us, and I sometimes have to remind myself, we need to lower our expectations about our knowing 100% about this virus, you know, we should have known X, Y, and Z, you know, symptoms and whatnot. The challenge is, is that it's so new, there, some of these heavily hit countries, they didn't have the bandwidth to even start assessing or reporting. They were literally in survival mode, you know, people in the gurneys in the hallways. And, and I reported uh, yesterday and the day before, we're seeing doctors coming together, you know, the assessment of COVID toes and now the blood clotting component. That's all come together by doctors who started to assess some trends and then started to communicate and collaborate. That communication and collaborative effort and then documentation and scientific research within the cases and profiles that of patients that allows us to get a broader base perspective. It's it's a higher level, you know, it's a, a you know, thousand foot perspective, but sometimes boots on the ground don't always have that capacity. And I know there's a lot of frustration 
I know a lot of people are frustrated, but I want to highlight the CDC has come around to um, bringing forth additional, I think it was six, six additional new symptoms. And I want to go over these because originally it was very aimed at respiratory, you know, shortness of breath, um, and inability, you know, so there was fatigue, but just really it was respiratory focus. Now we have, so it was originally fever, cough, and shortness of breath. Now they've added um, chills, repeated shaking with chills, okay, so the rigors, that's very common, um, muscle pain, headaches, sore throat, and then a new loss of taste or smell. Um, I also want to highlight two, uh, actually three additional um, symptoms, and they have listed this on here, but what they're, they're seeing more and more people when they're in, on the intake forms, you know, again, this is through collected data as people get uh, admitted into the hospital. There are some other things that um, we need to assess. Um, confusion is a big one. And then uh, the bluish lips or the bluish face. And so obviously that's a lack of oxygen. But the confusion is a big one that I want to talk about as well. Um, so one of the, the other kind of skin related, like muscle pain, um, even chills, there's this new description and people call it fizzing. People are experiencing this weird like buzzing electric like feeling on their skin and they, they describe it as it's like putting like a menthol or like an icy hot on your skin and it's what that feels like. So I've dug into this and the potential source of this is that as people's fevers are increasing, their body's detoxing chemicals are rising to the surface and that might be the skin experience of detoxing. We'll, I'm sure we're going to learn more about this, so as soon as I get more data on that, I'll share that. But I want to highlight that because I think that's something. Another thing, 1-3% to 3 of the um, cases coming into the hospitals are, are presenting with pink eye. Um, so that is another, that's not respiratory, but it's definitely in the upper you know, mucosal membrane. Pink eye is, is, is being linked or is at least one of the symptoms that they're showcasing. So I think that's kind of interesting, but the confusion is really big. The confusion that people are experiencing, and this is all ages. Again, this is not you know uh, particular to individuals in their you know 60s, 70s, 80s that might have dementia or Alzheimer's like cases. They're actually this symptom is a byproduct of the virus and the inflammation in the brain. So the inflammation, the, you know, the virus is, is in the brain itself, it's in the tissue, it's in the vascular channels, it's causing inflammation. We already know that the, the uh, cytokine storm, I highlight that if you guys want to look at, uh, we have a whole playlist here on YouTube. Um, it is very, very interesting. So Cupcake Paper says the fizzing, buzz, buzzing electric is 5G. That's not been proven. And um, that is another uh, topic that is getting banned on YouTube. So just FYI in terms of censorship. So just know that. Um, I can't really get into that. Um, I, I want to see more data, though. I will say that. Okay, Donna says, OMG, I couldn't remember my phone number or finish a sentence. Yeah. So that is brain-related inflammation. And the inflammation of the brain... You know, we've talked about the anti-inflammatories. I have a lot of really wonderful products in my full script store that you can grab and, and, and utilize to help support reducing the inflammatory levels. You know, going back to our video sponsor, sponsors, uh, Vegetox, you know, super greens, all of the particular items in here, particularly wheatgrass juice is a blood cleanser, barley grass, chlorella, uh, spirulina, moringa, these are anti-inflammatory. So making sure you get your greens are very good ways to, um, to really enhance the anti-inflammatory aspect. But confusion, it's on here. It literally, like they now have, you know, what, when to seek medical attention. Um, it's listed as trouble breathing, persistent pain or pressure in the chest, new confusion or an inability to arouse. Um, there are a lot of, and a lot, I don't know the number, I'm sorry, I wish I had the data. Um, 
it's there, I just don't know that number. But there's a great number of individuals who are being found in their homes. And they're on couches, and when, you know, some of the autopsy reports are drilling back that the blood clotting aspect, um, the, and that, by the way, that was a video from two days ago, so do check that out. Um, and, and COVID toes, those, those individuals, they are at home. Um, and that brought me to thinking, okay, so if you're at home, you know, either you have been tested or you haven't, you might be presenting with symptoms. How can you successfully monitor yourself, especially if you're by yourself or even with family, but if you're with family and you may have it, you're in quarantine. So that's why I want to talk to you about the uh, pulse ox, because I think this is a fabulous tool. This is what the hospital providers are using. And that's where they started to assess okay, you know, when a pulse ox is like 15 or 25, where it should be in the high 90s, and people are like, la, 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 playing on their phone, checking out Facebook, and, you know, TikTok. <laughs> By the way, I have a friend who's totally into TikTok. I get messages, TikTok videos all the time, and they're they're totally hilarious. Um, but it's it's posed a, ch a question because when, you're, when you are presenting with a low pulse ox, these cases... Are they see are seemingly fine and so you might be seemingly fine at home and and if you're not monitoring your pulse ox it might not register that you need to go and get seek medical attention and then also confusions a whole nother dynamic to that so that is something I wanted to highlight I have highlighted the lot the loss of smell and taste the one distinction here is that the loss of taste is a different nerve center a near, different nerve pathway than the, the loss of, of smell. But part of it is related to the inflammation, it's partly related to the way the virus uh, replicates, and also how we are exposed to it. We are often exposed through eye, nose, and mouth. And so that's where we see the greater instance of those cells, and then they kind of, they, it triggers the immune response. Um, cupcake paper, my niece lost both taste and smell for two weeks. Yeah, it's very common. And the other thing too that they're starting to note, and again, this I'm waiting for this, the data on it, but they're starting to analyze that um, individuals who lose taste and smell, have they often have a milder version. So maybe they are exposed to somebody who had a more intense uh, exposure, or not exposure, more intense uh, viral infection. And then the, you know, like, so husband, for, say, for instance, has really intense virus, uh, you know, down for three weeks. Wife, sister, family member, whomever, they lose loss of taste and smell, have mild fever, not nearly all of those symptoms of rickers and other things like that. So I think that's very, very interesting. Um, and Robert says, most of that sounds like the flu. Yes. Um, you know, a lot of viruses, colds, will often uh, mimic the flu, but this just to be clear, is not the flu. Um, and yesterday I reported, you know, globally we're at 2.7 million cases. We have 197 deaths globally. And, um, you know, at, at, and here in the U.S., like I reported, we have over 50,000 deaths. That surpasses seven of nine cold or flu seasons. So it's not the flu. The symptoms can be similar, but there's, there's some uniqueness um, to these symptoms. And the other thing too is it affects everybody differently. Um, so Donna says, I had a low pulse ox when I went to the hospital. Um, and the CDC says pets can contract the virus. Yes, so Anga, um, that is absolutely true. I reported a few days ago two kitties in New York uh, who had exposure either from their owner or life on the streets. I think it was described by one of the articles. Um, but they have, they, they were exposed to it and they came in with respiratory um, conditions. Okay, the real Charlie Lawrence says, I've been confused about that. When they say cases, they mean that those people have been 100% tested. Yes, that is absolutely true. So our numbers currently that I report every day, and I don't know if, um, oh yeah, okay, so Facebook, if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment in the box below. I try and answer them as I can. Um, yeah, so when I report cases, those are tested. Um, I do hear from all of you and people I know that have tried to get tested, can't get tested, go to the testing sites, they run out. 
Um, but yeah, the real trolley orange, these numbers are not just symptom based. Um, and we are still learning the symptoms. I mean, I think this is evidenced by the CDC just adding yesterday, you know, the six new symptoms that we are starting to discuss. So, you know, I had this week, I talked about COVID toes in one of our live show. The other um, show, I talked about the blood clotting um, aspect and the kind of overwhelming blood trauma that the body is showcasing. Strokes in young individuals, you know, 31 year old, 37, 38, 44 year olds having strokes and big blood clots that, you know, prompt uh, amputations of legs like the one Broadway star. That, I would imagine this might be another factor, but, you know, blood clotting, we don't always, we aren't always able to be tuned in. But let's talk about, you know, with my show, I always want to equip and um, empower you to be healthy and well. And empowerment means often building a toolbox of resources. So let's talk about a pulse ox. So this is a machine that literally you can, oh, sorry, you can buy at home. This, you can grab this at, or you can, you can grab it online. There are some vendors that can get you this in a few weeks. Others, it's a little bit of a delay. Even, you know, check out some of your durable medical supply companies. Some of them can sell online or you can go and pick up. But what you do is you literally put this machine, it's like a little kind of a paper clip, if you will, and you just put it on your hand, on your finger, usually the index finger, and you just wait and it will give you a readout. And so we'll just wait until my little readout comes out. But this is very powerful. Okay, so here we are. I'm right now, because I'm talking a lot, I'm at 96 in my oxygen and my heart rate is 86. So this is very powerful. When I, t when I did this, I think I take, took the photo, it was at 99 or 98. So um, this is a very good tool to measure where's your pulse ox. We use this, I think I mentioned to a lot of you um, that I hiked the Himalayas and got beyond high altitude for several, well, we, we were hiking for over four weeks, but we got into altitude um, and we were at altitude for, I think it was two and a half weeks and then extreme altitude for a matter of seven days. So th these were, we carried these all the time. So we monitored and assessed our oxygen levels. We had doctor check-ins at, you know, their check-in points that we had to analyze. And it was one of those very, very, um, powerful, um, uh, powerful tools for us to assess how are we doing because a lot of a lot of times if you're athletic or you're really um, you, you, you exercise a lot or you eat well you can feel like you're fine but your oxygen levels might not showcase that and that's the real indication because you can be fine now but people you know in altitude crash well the other thing about this particular virus and as we're starting to see how the doctors in ER and ICU are starting to retweak some of the protocols. They're starting to treat some of the lung related um, congestion and just the changes in the respiratory uh, process, the lower respiratory process. They're treating it like high altitude sickness. And again, this is one of those tools that's very, very easy for all of you. So my question, Donna, oh yeah, okay. So Donna, did you, did you have a pulse ox at home? Um, and were you monitoring this? So that's my question for Donna, who is at home. Um, Lois, my Samsung phone has an app that measures pulse, pulse oxygen. Would you think it would be accurate? Um, so that's interesting. I, I have seen vendors, um, and I've even been messaged by some of them, that they have a, a device like this that goes on the finger, and it transmits to your phone. The question I would have is how is it doing that? Like, do you put your finger on the app? But there's gotta be some measure measurement for it. But yes, technology can be very powerful for us. And this is something that um, I think would be a very impactful resource for all of you to get. The other thing too, I think it's also impactful for any of you who have um, asthma, who have bronchial challenges, often get sick, or have any type of respiratory impairments, lung disease, COPD, you know, the, ex the emphysema, 
and then also any of the radiated lung tissue. Those parties for sure need to have these at home. Anybody would benefit by this, especially if you, unlike us, we're staying at home, we're minimizing our contact. If you are out in the public, you're a frontliner, you're shopping for groceries, you're doing anything where you're exposed, this is going to be a good tool to monitor how you're doing respiratorily, if that's a word. Um, so what is the best pulse ox? So there are a lot of different ones. Um, I think right now, because supply is high, you know, the demand is high, supply is kind of low, the best one is the one that you can get faster and sooner than anything else. Um, so you might find these at, I, honestly, I'll tell you this, I don't think you'd find this at a Walmart or a Target. You might find these at uh, Walgreens or CVS. I'd call ahead. As many of you know, I've announced the only time we've really kind of gone out, we've done like runs through uh, Walgreens. They have now their little drive through is open. Very, very sanitary, very social distancing. I'm a big fan of that. Um, and I had, at Easter Sunday, I was making a dish and I had an ingredient I didn't have. So I called up Walgreens. It's like, do you guys have relish? Because I don't have pickles. And um, the guy said, yeah. And so they actually I said, okay, great. I'll be there, you know, in a little bit. And he actually ran the relish to the pharmacy. And so she was like, you called. And she had it all ready for me. It was very cute. But you can call and find out if they have these. And I think this would be very impactful um, for all of us to have. I mean, it is not a bad idea also to assess how are you doing on a daily basis? Because the other thing too, the more and more I read about this, you know, there's a lot of people, and, and I plan on packaging up some of my video content about like the most way to cough productively and how to expand and clear out your lungs and sleep, you know, on your tummy to help your lungs heal and drain. And I show, showed that probably three weeks ago on a Sunday. Again, that's in a, a playlist that you guys can grab. Facebook actually posted it, um, I think, recently. Um, oh, we might see Gabriel in a little bit. So um, why I mention that, uh, there, there's a lot of discussion of, okay, all you have to do is just wake up in the morning and take a deep breath, and, and if you can breathe well, you're fine. That's not necessarily true. Um, I do think that there are some really good lung exercises. There are some good ways to clear those passageways. I'm all for that. Um, I'm editing a video right now that talks about, there's two kind of parts to it. One part is a, a long chest pulse disc that I recommend using a lot of the products I've highlighted to you guys topically. But again, just don't rely on breathing to go, oh, I'm fine. You know, again, this is where this is most important. Oh, Tyler, hey, Tyler. Do you have any recommendations on COVID plus pregnancy or would you consider that as a future topic? That actually would be a future topic. However, we actually have several um, moms that I know that are very close to term and are getting utterly, utterly nervous. And so um, this would be, and I know Tyler, um, this would be one thing. I would call your physician, um, first of all, if it were me in this situation, I would want to see there's ways or clinics where you can do outpatient related deliveries. So you're minimizing your exposure and you're not by yourself. That is a big thing right now, um, depending on where you're at. I, Tampa and the kind of those areas, you might be okay. But here in Atlanta, there the COVID protocols, pregnant moms are laboring solo. Um, so that's one thing. The second thing would be, um, and, and this I do need to dig into this further, as far as pregnancy, it's this really weird question mark about um, women who are pregnant test negative up through to delivery, tw and then they test them again at twenty, like twenty five hours after delivery, they'll test positive. And the challenge, and I don't want to scare you, and I, I know um, you know delivery has a lot of fears anyway, traditionally with women. But one of the things, the challenges that we're seeing with some of the ladies the blood clotting factor, the blood clotting, um, you know, the placenta delivery, all of that is, is a factor. So what I would do, Tyler, I'd see if you could have your OBGYN run your K2 levels and you want to have those optimized as much as you can um, because that will help minimize uh, potential risk. The other thing would be, uh, like yesterday's video would be a good video um, to watch where I talk about um, 
ways of, of or actually two days ago, the um, blood clotting video, um, you know, omegas are really good, you know, for keeping things moving and healthy. Um, and DHA, DHA is very good for the baby. Um, the other thing that would be impactful would be um, to look at adding um, uh, not just vitamin K2, but vitamin D. Those two go hand in hand. Okay, cannot get rid of my chest cold. Using colloidal spray and probiotics and natural cough syrup. What are your thoughts? Um, is it just a chest cold or could this potentially be COVID? Um, that's the one kind of question that a lot of people are plagued with, but you're having a lingering chest cold. Is it really a chest cold? Um, so I would call your provider, talk with them. They'll run through symptoms, especially if you've been a little feverish and see if maybe you get a test. Um, Susan, good morning. Okay, so Donna, Dr. Melissa, why hasn't anyone mentioned using an insensitive spirometer? It's helpful perhaps because I use oxygen. Oh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, to do, Dr. Melissa, can you please advise if it's okay to buy pet birds during these times? I, I don't see why not. Um, you know, in Gabriel's perfect world, he wants a hamster. <laughs> So if we were going out and about, pet stores are open, I do know that. Um, so that would be kind of enter at your own risk. Um, but, you know, as far as I know, cats and dogs, we should see in transmission from human to animal. You know, it's a likelihood that they could move into a bird. Um, so I don't know if that's just for their safety or your safety. Um, okay, so cupcake paper. My niece is pregnant and WVU has a separate tent for the check-ins. That's great. Um, yeah, and there, there are, um, there are a lot of folks. Oh, James says, congratulations with the baby. Oh, for Pat. Yay. Okay. So is colloidal silver legit? Yes, it is. Okay. Sheila, you were tested and it was negative. Okay. Um, so, um, I have a lot of content on that. I want to kind of stay up, up on this particular, um, content with this. Um, but what I would say is if you are experiencing any type of chest colds, um, you know, poultices, oil of oregano in a carrier is, are very helpful um, in, you know, immune boosting. Get your greens. Again, I have to give out a shout out to VegaTox, our video sponsor. Yay! That's my smoothie that I'm drinking this morning. This is eight superfoods. And again, superfoods are very powerful. Like the wheatgrass juice is very blood supportive spirulina has a lot of protein and very detoxing um you know the other thing too is you know with with colds sometimes it's allergy season and sometimes it's internal allergies i have a video i'm going to be shooting this weekend about keeping your homes clean and uv air filtration i'm hoping now it doesn't get dinged because of the whole uv thing <laughs> the comments recently about putting uv in your mucosal membranes or inside your body um, which, by the way, there are treatments that are out there. They are uh, on the newish side, but they are clinical providers, medical providers that are doing that. That is nothing that you would ever do on your own. And again, don't drink or ingest or intensely inhale any type of Clorox or disinfectant. That is absolutely not what you want to do and would cause more harm. Um, what does this taste like? So it actually tastes like, you're going to taste it again. It tastes great. First of all, my base is um, a non-dairy base. So I have oat milk. Uh, there's a blend of um, coconut and almond milk. It's kind of my protein smoothie that's just, or not, not smoothie, protein drink that has plant-based proteins in it. So I use that often as a base. And just banana and blueberry. And you know, the banana gives it some sweetness. Um, but it, it tastes great. I mean, this, like a half a blueberry or half a banana, a handful of blueberries, about a cup and a half of, uh, you know, um, non-dairy free milk and the greens and it tastes great. I will tell you, I drink a lot of green stuff anyway, and I love spirulina and I actually use blue spirulina as well. So I'm, I'm used to the kind of taste to it. Now, if Gabriel were to drink this, He'd say it's a little gritty, but he doesn't like any of the powders in liquid. He'll, I do powders in his yogurt. So you could add this to yogurt or 
some other um, kind of liquidy kind of substance for him. He doesn't like to drink his powders. I'm fine with it. Brian would say, oh, my God, I can't drink it. He wouldn't like it. Okay, so um, Emerald Style 17. Do you have recommendations for staying safe when getting a colonoscopy? I'm overdue for my annual procedure due to health history, but concerned about possible exposure from the hospital and staff. So, you know, the big question here, and very similar to um, with Tyler, you know, in pregnancy, I know that you can do some of these at outpatient providers or outpatient centers. See if you can do that versus being in a hospital setting. Um, I think that does cut down the risk, but obviously you're always going to have, there's always going to be a risk. Um, and so, you know, for, for my own personal health, like I got a call from my, uh, one of my medical providers for a regular check. I said, you know what? I want to come in, but I'm not going to, and I'll call you when I feel comfortable, probably towards the end of summer. Um, and so if it's absolutely not critical or essential, you know, for some of the regular checkups, I'm pushing them out. Um, but if they're, you know, doing cancer screenings or it's a part of a protocol that you have, you have to do it. See if you can move it to an outpatient center. You know, uh, there are there are colonoscopies. Not all, you know, all colonoscopies are not just being performed in the hospital setting. Um, the other thing too, though, to that note is um, not some of these would be considered elective. Others are not. So. That's something to find out as well as even if that annual procedure has been sidelined based on your state or where you're at, because that is a big thing. The, the physicians will be in full PPE. So do expect you to see a very different kind of equipped, you know, medical team, you know, when you meet your doctor, the nurses, the anesthesiologist, you know, all three are going to be wearing full on PPE. They're going to have everything. Same thing with pregnancy. It will feel weird, and, and that will be um, sometimes disturbing and anxiety-producing for folks, and, and that's just the way the medical community is going to be operating you know, now and moving forward until we really get through this. Um, is Vegetox okay for pregnancy? It doesn't have anything that says on here any warnings, but I always you know, um, have folks check with their providers if they're adding anything new, uh, but this is strictly, uh, green uh, plants, green plant-based. It's not any type of vitamin, um, you know, or nutrient mix other than it's it's quite plant-based. So super greens, really, really good. And they actually have a, um, their, their recipe adds in banana, uh, mango, spinach, and then uh, two servings of the super greens powder. But it's, it's really amazing. It gives, um, protein it has um, fiber in it as well I mean it's but it's not too fibrous like it's a good consistency for me oh Lori thank you she says I love everything dr. Melissa recommends for us um, okay I do not hear about this um, okay let's see Lori I got my guru Nanda essential oils love them and my stress suppressed tea yay um, Okay, so let's talk a little bit. Okay, so Jules, my daughter is due in two weeks. What is the K2 test and what does it show? So K2 is a vitamin. It is a vitamin that is often deficient um, and the deficiency can cause blood clots. And honestly, my own preference, and I had our doctors do this, um, I feel like all pregnant women, especially towards the later term, should have that value assessed. Um, often when you work with midwives or doulas, you'll get a little bit of a different kind of testing methodology or approach, but K2 will tell us um, those values to minimize uh, blood clotting before, during, and after pregnancy so or delivery. And one of the challenges in the U.S. particularly is we don't monitor that value for pregnant women. We have, a, we have an abnormally high morbidity mortality rate and we don't talk about this and this is something that is absolutely disturbing but it's a first world country we have the highest morbidity mortality rate of pregnant women or laboring you know new moms and some of it's from hemorrhaging um sometimes we're too aggressive with like trying to have the placenta pass it's just it's a little too abrasive and because of that also 
women will um, state that they have problems and they get ignored, but it definitely does evaluate those levels. And then also if they're low, that can minimize um, blood clotting. Uh, but you know, the one thing, initially there was a lot of communication that, oh, if you're pregnant, you're totally fine. You've got immunity or whatnot. Like I've heard a lot of these stories and that's not valid. If anything, what's really bizarre is that, you know, women test negative right before they have their child and then a day later they test positive. And I think some of that's just the natural body immune process. Um, oh, thanks, cupcake paper, $4.99 super chat. Thank you, thank you. Cheers, green drinks, yay. Um, so that is something I think that um, it, it needs to be assessed more. Um, okay, so Deborah, hey Deborah, over on Facebook, she says, my husband tested on April 3rd, he was positive, they did not want to test me. See, that is just, that's a problem. Uh, globally, I mean, just think about that. You guys are living in the same household, you've got exposure. We are sleeping in different rooms. Uh, for our safety, I suffer from, suffer of asthma, just a juicer. Breville, do you have any juice, any recipes for recovering? Yeah, so I for sure would grab a Vegetox for him in green juice, pretty much everything that you can get your hands on. You know, all greens, um, ginger, 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 lots of ginger. Ginger is anti-inflammatory, turmeric. Um, I actually have a protocol, I'll post on Facebook. I have a protocol that I've, I've kind of listed out as kind of the antivirus checklist. Those would be items, and again, a lot of those are in my full script store, that would be in the catalog. You're going to want to use food plus really strong kind of functional medicine protocols, um, herbs, you know, nutrient density, homeopathics to address that. Um, let's see. Uh, do I have a video on thyroid, Georgia Peach? Oh, yes. I have a whole playlist on thyroid. Uh, issues, challenges, hyper, hypo, Hashimoto's. I also have protocols. Um, they're all available in my digital online store. So if you go to my website, naturalhealthresources.com, you can grab one that suits your thyroid related condition. And it, it's, it, I even have reflexology points that you can invigorate that help balance that. Um, very, very substantial protocol. It's very powerful, and um, I think you would like that. So those are downloadable, purchasable, and downloadable uh, via an email that gets sent to you, sent to you. What is what is a pulse ox to go to the hospital? Okay, so that's an excellent question. Okay, so let's get back to pulse ox. Um, and Deborah, I hope you guys. Um, uh, she said, "Sorry, I didn't say good morning." Uh, you know, I, so we're just thinking about you and your husband. I know it's really scary, and. Um, you know, just do your best at, um, you know, sanitizing as much as you can, really social, you know, really quarantining. Um, the other thing too is make sure, and this is a radical approach, but you know, if you're delivering food to his door, he'd want to be in a room the whole entire time. So, you know, Brian and I have strategized about this. Um, and then we even were like, okay, one of us would just go to a hotel. Um, because if you're in a room, you need a bathroom, you don't want to have that kind of exposure of like getting, you know, some people don't have masters that have a bathroom attached or might not work for their arrangements. Um, but one of the things is, um, you know, really, really being careful you know, not to send him like a cup or glass to have the throwaway type of, um, utensils, throwaway, um, uh, you know, garbage, like the you know, we've been using these or did initially when our kitchen was a wreck um, before they put in our utility sink. Um, we were using like the just, you know, the throwaway plastic plates and stuff like that. What you don't want to do is you don't want to be picking those up, washing them. That enhances your risk um, of transmission. Um, and then the other thing too is I would recommend you get for his room a UV air filter and at least that can filter out the air. You can't create negative pressure. That's the ideal way to kind of quarantine, um, but it would at least clean that air so that you know the HVAC is going to be, your, your air system is going to be pulling you know, his droplets and then moving it through the house. Uh, I know that sounds crazy, but that is definitely 
Uh, Joy, welcome. I got in a few minutes late on the discussion of blood clots. Um, yeah, so I actually have a live, um, so I'm doing live shows. This is like our 40. Actually, this is, I think this celebrates, let me look at my calendar. This is a celebration. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is my seventh week, friends. Let me go and laugh to you. Seven weeks. <laughs> So that's how long we have been in quarantine. I said six weeks earlier. Holy cow. You know, anybody else losing days? <laughs> that's not my memory. <laughs> I'm confused. Um, so Joy, I actually have a playlist on YouTube and I post them every day to my Facebook page and you can see it has like a little heart with the little, uh, you know, uh, heartbeat lines. Watch that video that I dig that dig further into it. But what I try to do for everybody new and Facebook's new joining us. Um, I try and stay to the topic at hand, and then every day is a new topic. Uh, but I really, really try and cover as much as we can to equip all of you, and particularly Deborah is an instance where, just to kind of give you a, a, you know, up to date, Deborah has a husband quarantining at home. He's tested positive. She has asthma, so she has an underlying health condition that poses a risk. If it's scary, it's nerve-wracking. And, um, you know, so what I would do is I would, Deborah, if you have a chance, go to some of those, the playlist, um, and watch some of those specific related videos. I have, you know, lung draining. I posted that here on YouTube. Um, but that's very, very, um, powerful is to really be, um, aware of some of that spread. Um, and the likelihood is you might end up having exposure. Just how your body and, and your immune process handles that is a big question mark. So you want to do everything that you can just to fortify your body. Um, okay, so Jada says, is Deborah going to get corona? Um, there's no way to predict that, but the best way to limit your exposure in that type of situation and, and this is just on this. So Deborah, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to call you out or pick on you or anything. We in the U S are not treating this the way we need to treat this. So for instance, in other countries like Seoul, Korea or South Korea, what they did is husband. So for instance, Deborah husband's test comes back positive. He doesn't go home to expose Deborah. He gets sent to an isolation quarantine hotel. And he convalesces there. He has workers who have PPE and all the other stuff, and they're delivering food. And those the food bowls don't even leave the room. He's in there. He's getting you know whatever medical needs he has, but he's just hanging out and not exposing anybody. We're not doing that here in the U.S. And we're putting partners at, at risk. Um, and you know, the likelihood of him being in this state could be two to three weeks. So financially, you know, I, I, we said one of us would go to a hotel. That's if hotels are open and available. And, you know, I haven't even looked into that. But that is definitely something that, you know, as we get better, and that is like a big if we get better with our testing, with our contract tracing, and then the isolation, that was, that's what I presented earlier in the week. The huge um, kind of getting back to, I want to see if it's over here. Oh my gosh, you guys, I have so much information. Um, actually, uh, it's over there, but I can't grab it. Um, I had, I put out the pandemic. Um, there was the report that came out of Harvard. The School of Ethics put out this whole thing about like how to get back into normal, zone, normal mode. And it's about testing, it's about contact tracing, and it's about isolation. And how Deborah's family is being tasked to handle this is is not the best approach but there is no other option and so you know and she's like exactly so <clears throat> and we just wish you all the best so let's give some healing energy send those thoughts and prayers over to deborah her and her family that she's protected um because i know you know it's 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 hitting home in a lot of different ways and you know we have through all of my just my social communities we have over a half a million followers, patients, <clears throat> customers, and I do not want any of you to be in a situation where you are coming down um, with with this virus or has anybody in your family. I mean, it, it's rocking families. 
Um, okay, so Instagram, you're coming up on 15 seconds. We'll continue this. I'm gonna answer a lot of questions. So if you guys are cool with that, give me a thumbs up. For YouTube, hit the like button. And Facebook, you guys, give me a like if you're liking this and hit the share button. Share to any groups that you guys follow. Um, that does help us. And we actually have a private um, Facebook group as well um, that you can be a part of too. Okay, so we're gonna bring Instagram back up. Let's see here. Welcome back Instagram for part two of our natural health news live show where we're talking about the benefits of using pulse oximeters or our oximetry. Uh, it's a pulse ox meter that will evaluate where you are in your oxygen levels. And that really stands to be a state of assessing your health at home. If you have had the pos have tested positive, if you think that you have the virus, there are just a lot of symptoms I went over today in part one. So link down there where you can see this, but CDC's listed a few new symptoms that um, are a little unique and we're not hearing a whole lot about. Um, so I'm going to answer our questions here because we're in the latter half of our live show. Um, let's see, Lori, do, uh, Lori says, I see no coupon, just a link to the site. I don't know what coupon, um, but let's see. We've got questions here, PO, pulse ox, oh, to go to the hospital. So really anything in the low 90s, 80s would be indicative of going to the, going to the hospital. So I showed, you know, I've been talking this whole time. So I'll show you my full socks. Um, and Deborah says it's not easy emotionally or mentally. My husband was unconscious. I had to keep yelling to get him up. That was the day. Here, I'm gonna read her. Day of violent vomiting. I am ordering one of those too. And YouTube, I will, I will post this. Okay, so I'm talking a little bit. So I'm at 97. Sometimes 90, you know, like there I'm at 99. So 96 is if I've like talked for a lot and then not breathing, which happens a lot. Um, but you know, so if you're in the 92, 91, 90, low 80s, definitely that's when you call it. But you also monitor, you know, keep a little chart, kind of monitor, you know, when you're kind of dipping. Because the other thing too, it's not a common. You know, let's say you have the fever and you're up at 2 a.m. Well, you'll have lower pulse ox at that time frame anyway, just because of the way the body is slowing itself down. So just know that there will be different times of the day you'll have different measurements. But definitely, if you're kind of consistently in the low 90s, definitely call. Um, and then also you might see a dip. Like, you know, it could be in like 95, 94, 95, and then boom, you hit 60. Okay, something's up. And if that's 60 reading for a while, that would definitely be an, an indicator. Something's going on with that, the respiratory element. Okay, uh, my sister and mother-in-law are in ICU and on ventilators with COVID. Betty Schilling, oh, Betty, I hate to hear that. Let us know how are they doing and how long have they been there? And um, so you guys, Facebook, we have a commenter, Betty uh, Schilling, said her sister and brother-in-law are in the ICU on ventilators. Yeah, I mean, it is, it's affecting a lot of people and a lot of families. And, um, you know, the any way that we can equip ourselves with tools and resources that empowers us to, uh, empowers us to stay healthy, you know, again, like green green powders from our video sponsor, Vegetox, or just staying up on our oxygen levels is critical. And it's critical in the nature of like, is it, is it a difference of you needing dialysis for the rest of your, your life after you recover? Because people are recovering, but now we're gonna need to also start talking about, okay, post COVID. Post COVID means dialysis, kidney dialysis, because the kidneys have been damaged because of the low oxygen. Um, so, okay, so Betty, you're getting virtual hugs, lots of loves um prayers uh lots of lots of comments uh over on our youtube community um the mother tree said fear will screw up your pulse ox and there's a lot of that bs being spread around yeah fear definitely uh you know again going back to breath meditation you know breathing can not only slow the heart rate down but you know it, what I will say, and I want to caution, you know, the mother tree, or the, I think it's the mother, yeah, the mother tree, 
you know, low pulse ox in the 90s is not going to be fear-based. It's going to be virus-based. And so, you know, we don't want to necessarily minimize true low pulse ox readings. You know, in the 80s, 70s, and 60s, we're seeing the lungs starting to crash in terms of their ability to sustain healthy oxygen. That's going to be critical. Um, all right, so, and Betty, I want you to keep us posted. We've got Lori saying, praying for you, Betty. On, uh, Anika, you know, doing a little prayer emoji. Same with Darlene, sending healing prayers to all who are suffering from the virus. Jules and uh, Cupcake, they're sending prayers. So, and uh, Pat asks, Betty, do you feel the love? We care about you. So, lots of love to you and your family. And stay strong and see if it's possible. One of the things that uh, with families in ICU and on ventilators, um, the hospitals have Zoom. They've got mini iPads like I've just got you guys all set up on Facebook. Um, and see, you know, keep in contact with those professionals as much as you can and see if you can do a video chat with them. They, even though it will seem like they're not responsive, they can hear messages from family and that's one of the best gifts you can give your loved ones. It also is a gift for you because you feel like you're still staying connected to them. So just see if you can do that in the hospital. And that's for any of us, just to keep that, you know, in the back of our our um, our heads, you know, the 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 ICU now is less um, engaging with patients than ever before, and so one of the things when they are going in um, to you know do whatever work they're going to do with the patient, um, a lot of them are going in with tablets and they're helping families connect with the loved ones. So, and that, that does require open lines with the healthcare uh, center, the facility, the ICU, nurses um, that, that will keep you abreast of that situation. So, um, there is not a coupon. So, I don't, unfortunately, I don't have a coupon for the Vegetox, um, but gosh, it's good. And I'll just show you, if you guys want to look and see. Um, so, it's very beautiful. Look at this green color, see? Nice and creamy. It's really, really pretty. I gotta show you guys on YouTube, over on Facebook. Facebook's a little spotty. Okay, so Brenda Compagna, true or false? Immunity built at day 10 allows in-home medical provider to return to providing care. All three CDC guidelines met. She returned to work on day 14 from positive tests. Seems false to me. Um, so that's an excellent question. And I, I know that every healthcare system is treating this differently. The facilities, and it's also changing with our understanding that 20% of our healthcare providers are testing positive. So the question is, you know, uh, immunity built. The World Health Organization has, has cautioned um, against there's no evidence that we have immunity built just because we've had it. We don't see any antibody testing right now that's showcasing herd immunity. So we also do know, and I've reported this, gosh, I can't believe we're on seven weeks. Um, yeah, I reported this probably like four weeks ago where we know that we viral shed for up to, I think it was 72 days. It was either 58 or 72 days. But there is fecal viral shed and there is um, respiratory viral shed. And we see that in patient rooms that have been analyzed. We see that um, you know, even after the fact when families go home. Now, does that mean they're necessarily contagious or it's just the virus kind of moving through the process of the immune system now getting control of it? That's a big question. So I think one of the things, Brenda, that question, I, I can't answer true or false. But I do know that some facilities are bringing people back sooner because they are short-staffed and they need, you know, if you go down an ER nurse, an ER doc, an ICU doctor or a nurse or even, you know, technicians that are doing CT scans of the lungs or they're doing the oxygen treatments, the respiratory therapists, that's not an easily transitioned, you know, um, skill set. So you can't just bring somebody in from like telemed or from you know radiology so that's a challenge and that's i think one of the things that has shaped some of the medical facilities it is different 
Um, and I, we are seeing it's different also across the U.S. Okay, Yvonne, parents installed a medical grade HVAC filter, kills viruses and bacteria. Uh, not sure if Corona was a few years ago. Um, so we actually have one of those and I still run UV um, in our house. We have three dogs, three adult, you know, two adults and a, a child. Um, and so I, I, regardless of that, unless the only thing I would say, unless there's a UV strip inside the ductwork, that HVAC, it, it's not, it's the droplets, we're just spewing those. Um, so I, I would probably gauge, Yvonne, if your parents called the um, HVAC provider, that they would say that that, that doesn't guarantee it. Um, and in fact, I think they would probably do that legally as well. Um, okay, so Betty says, thank you. They need all the prayers they can get. Um, and Deborah says, stay strong, don't watch the news, totally. Um, okay, viral spread, oh my goodness. So we just need to be super careful that everyone is a carrier even after recovery. Yes, that's pretty much what, um, at least today, you know, this morning in Europe, the um, World Health Organization is just really cautioning um, I think too, there's a lot of discussion here in the US. I mean, we are we are the epicenter. I mean, this is we're the worst country at this point dealing with this. And so um, we we are definitely dealing with a lot. And because of it, they're also watching what's being said. Um, and also what, you know, I think there was something like I want to say it was like 47 different tests kits that have been passed by the FDA, like really fast. And these are going to be Testing kits for the virus and antibody tests. Um, all right, Brenda says, thank you. Since mom is homebound, we wish that they would have sent other in-home provider because they have an additional ones. Provider didn't wear a mask. Oh, gosh, on return to work until we requested she do so. Yeah, so, you know, some of the challenges with home care, and that's, that's like another aspect to you that we're going to start to see. Um, and I, I know some friends here locally that they have uh, pick lines and things like that. Some patients as well, you know, cancer uh, patients that are getting administered medications at home through IV. Um, one of the challenges is that home care providers tend to be the least um, equipped and provided for in terms of safety uh, for not just themselves, but also the patients they're dealing with. So, you know, in that type of situation, I would call the provider and, and definitely demand that, but also be equipped with that at your own home um, because the likelihood is they're wearing the same mask from home to home. And then also I'd have make sure that they take their shoes off before they go into your house um, so that they're not bringing in the droplets on their shoes. I know that sounds crazy, you guys, but I mean, we just really have to be very cautious, especially when we have at-risk um individuals in our homes and our families, we have to do everything that we can to equip them to be healthy and safe. Um, so I see 2009 BA, open doors to home, will that help? Well, I definitely think opening and airing out a home is always impactful just to clear things out. You know, just be cognizant, like if we do that, allergies are here. So as soon as we close our door, you know, windows, I've got a whole owl of my air filters, pretty much every room, upstairs, downstairs. Um, very, very critical that we keep clearing that out. Um, AW, first time here. Oh, welcome. I hope you follow and uh, subscribe, join our community, and hit the notification bell for all of you. Because uh, then you actually get notified when we go live. You can subscribe and that bell will be off. You want to turn that on for all of you who love our content. Um, so you are very informative. How long... Do you droplets last on soles of shoes? So depending on the type of shoe, it could be rubber, it could be metal. Um, so the material itself is the variable and uh, anywhere from three to five to seven days, depending on the type of material. So that means that you want to have outside shoes if you're going about shopping or whatnot, take them off, uh, take off you know, your clothing in like your garage with the garage door closed have a, you know, a paper bag, you put that in to be cleaned and shower, washing your hair and showering. And, you know, I always say do your nasal spray, you know, the saline spray just to clear out and cleanse your, your sinuses too. Um, so, uh, let's see, my nurse, 
for OTPT won't take off shoes. My house is clean. Oh my gosh, I would demand that. Yeah, Donna, and I would even put a sign at the door. <laughs> All medical, you know, professionals take your shoes off. And even have like a little cardboard basket, you know, or like cardboard box. Have them, you know, put that in. Because here's the thing, cardboard, the virus dies after 24 hours on, on, the, on the surface. So that's one of the easiest, like males and that same kind of, cat, you know, category of cardboard paper. Uh, let's see, the, Charlie, the real Charlie Warren says, we wear all white and then bleach the clothes and do everything you mentioned. Excellent. Um, my husband, Marietta, my husband works at Hyundai and Kia Automotive Plant in Tallahassee, Tallahassee, Alabama on Monday. Not sure if this is going to be safe. I know. Um, yeah, providing booties, um, Alexi, Alexi. What I would say, if you did provide booties, still have them take their shoes off. And then the booties they would put on as they get inside and then take them off uh, outside. And then they swap out their shoes. Like we actually have a center. Um, you know, we have deliveries and stuff. Um, I have a little center that we made right by the door. And I have uh, wipes for, hand wipes for all the professionals that are delivering stuff to us. I have, I give away hand sanitizers, we have snacks, I have masks, I have gloves, and and I buy more every week or, you know, however often um, I have an Instacart shopper or online, um, and that's for these folks, and they take what they need, um, and I, I value that because if you can give them things to help them, they will use them. Hand sanitizer, too. I would, you know, have a little station outside if you've got medical people coming into your home, have a little hand sanitizer, spray or whatever, you know, Clorox white, uh, Clorox, or, and, and I say Clorox, but, you know, I've mentioned forces of nature is what we use inside. Um, you know, not everybody will know or even think that that's what is going to help them. So um, you can obviously have that and use it in your house because it, it is very powerful at cleaning, but, you know, Clorox white thing and just little notes, like we've got taped on, I use my little post -it notes tape on, you know, for your, you know, to clean your hands. And then, you know, and I, we have a sign. Thank you for everybody delivering. We appreciate your work. We have snacks and, and healthcare stuff for you. Um, so Alyssa, I will post, um, Aaliyah is where I've been getting the majority of my, um, hand sanitizers. And then sometimes hit or miss, um, I've been able to get some smaller independent ones from my Instacart, uh, person that goes to Sprouts. Sprouts is like my go-to. So they got me all of my clean well sanitizers. And they're, you know, a little expensive, but to be honest with you, these people are doing the job that I don't want to do. And I would, you know, know that they're putting their lives at risk, delivering and coming into people's space. And so any way I can support them, I am going to do that. Um, can the shoe covers help wearing them to store when purchasing food? That's actually an excellent question. So I think the material, I, I know the material on the, on the covers, they're still, they're not, uh, you know, so droplets basically are water, snot, mucus. I know it sounds gross, but that's what they are. Um, you know, the heavy ones fall, the gra you know, the gravitational pull, it pulls them down. So there's a lot more viral spread on the floors than anything but it's circulating, it's aerosolized, so it's circulating in the air for two to three hours after somebody infected has breathed in that space or coughed or, and that is why the mask is not necessarily about the person, it's about everybody else. So they cough, you know, it minimizes just how much is coming out into the space. And if you guys want, my friend Sarah, she's still making masks, I have all of my, you know, Etsy store links down below. Um, so, oh, Sheila, you can order this at www.vegetox.com, and this is so good. Um, and then you just add it to your smoothie like I have. So I would say, uh, Debra, on that front, I don't think it would be absolutely protective. I think the most effective way in the car, you could have your shopping shoes, and you could have a cardboard box in the back of your trunk. And you, you know, have your, you know, inside your car shoes and your shopping shoes, and you could do a swap in the, and, and, you know, I haven't shopped, but this is what I would do. I would have in my trunk, we have an SUV, so it pops up. So I would have a box where my normal shoes would be. 
Um, and then I would probably have my plastic flip flops, um, you know, drive in that, you know, I'd get out of the car and walk around. And again, just think about those droplets going to be in the parking lot too. So I would have, uh, really you'd have three pairs of shoes. One that you'd be wearing in the car to get out to swap into the shopping shoes, your shopping shoes shop. And then when you get back to the car, take them off and stick them in, um, the cardboard box. Again, cardboard, if there's transmission 24 hours, that's dead. But you'd have to clean the bottom of your shoes either when you get home or there, whatever. Have a little, again, a little sanitizing station for your hands. Um, I actually am going to share um, tomorrow, there's a vendor that I found that they actually have these really great little hand soapy wash things that are on the go that are great for this type of situation. Um, so that would be something I would do. And then, um, you could swap out your shoe. I mean, so there's still going to be exposure in the parking lot, but it's a whole lot better than your Trader Joe's, Target, CVS, Walgreens exposure. Um, and I know that sounds really crazy and people have given me flack about how diligent that sounds or how detailed, but we really have to think about where these droplets are. We don't see these. So because we don't see it, we can't assume it's not there. We have to assume it is there. And these droplets are so small, they're in the air, we can't see them. Um, and I shared, you know, with you all on the live show weeks ago, the droplets, like the spray goes 23 to 27 feet. So a sneeze can extend 27 feet. That could be three aisles over, you know, at a shopping store. Um, Elizabeth, Dr. Melissa, I live in upstate New York. My dad was rushed to Albany Medical Center yesterday with 102.3 fever. They said they couldn't test him and sent him home. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry to hear that. Have him, get him a pulse ox. Uh, here it is. Make sure he has this and has that he's monitoring. Call your, call the pharmacies. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, okay. Do, do, do. Uh, let's see, Alexi. Uh, when I walk my dog, I don't wear a mask. I stay away from anyone I see heading my way. Everyone is being very conscientious of staying more than two meters apart. So here's the thing, again, because of the spray, you should be wearing a mask. Um, you know, the, the mask, there's a multi, multiple kind of degree of, of powerful masks. Some are just going to protect others from you, and then others can protect others from you. Um, so I'll go over that. Um, if you guys want that on a live show, I can do that. I've also thought about putting that together in a YouTube video. Um, Kay Jefferson says sanitizer is slow coming back in stock. I was able to get a 32 ounce container online from Walmart, also from the Honest Companies. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, so slowly supplies coming back in. I got scored toilet paper last uh, on Monday. I was like, oh, I swear I should have played the lottery. I might have won the Powerball. Um, does UV sanitizing disinfect the masks? Um, I bought UV sanitizer small boxes for sanitizing masks and keys. Um, so it depends on the manufacturer and I have to look at the clinical reports of it, but there are things for the phone, um, and wands and stuff like that. But again, that is for objects, not for the body. Um, can you spray the bottom of your shoes with Lysol or Clorox before touching the gas? Yes, you could. And Ann Lynn says, can you spray the bottom of your shoes with Lysol or Clorox before touching the gas and brake pedals? Yes. And that would be something too. You know, just think about like, you know, like the side, when you get in the car, sometimes your feet kind of touch like that little side thing. You can clean that, spray it. We honestly, if we get plastic, I'll just spray it and leave it. I don't even wipe it now. <laughs> um, okay, I do have an N95 mask. I know you hate it, but it's, it's, be you, it's better to hate that than hate being in an ICU all alone. And I, I don't say that in fear mode, but like the alternative you know, because this is what I, you know, I love, I love our neighbors and I, you know, we live in a great community. I don't trust anybody. I don't trust people to take care of themselves as much as I would take care of myself. And that might come off in a negative way. And I'm sorry if it sounds terrible, but I have a certain standard for our health and I don't always feel like other people would respect or value that standard and might not approach me or my family with that degree of a standard. And so we just have to take ownership and, and make decisions on our own. 
So our decision, we're not going back to work in the work mode. We're still working from home. You know, we're questioning school. We don't know what's going on with school. Summer camps probably aren't going to happen. You know, Brian's like, let's just consider a fall off. <laughs> you know, so we got to figure out tuition and stuff like that with Gabriel's school. Um, but it's, it is kind of, it, it, you know, there's just a lot of stuff to think about. Um, Kathleen says, when my mom dropped into the 90s on the Pulse Ops, she would start sounding a little confused, almost drunk sounding. Something to listen for. That's excellent. It'll, yes, and that's a good point. It'll come off almost like they have a diabetic crash. And there's sometimes that correlation with the kidneys too. Um, and that's another thing is to monitor their blood sugar to see. When O2 oxygen levels fall, you'll start to see some changes in their uh, blood sugar levels. Um, okay, so Taryn, I feel the same way. I don't trust others. This is not the time to let your feelings or your guard down. 100%, totally. Uh, saludos to Uruguay, we wapa. Yay, thanks for joining us. Uh, let's see, has anyone heard of a Jaws disinfectant? I have not. Um, all right, so I'm going to wrap up our show today. Um, but first, definitely want to thank our friends at Vegetox. They really, this is a great green juice. Comes out of the UK. One of the things I like, this is, again, dairy-free, GMO, GMO gluten, dairy-free, no sweeteners, no fillers, no additives, no preservatives, nothing artificial. It's just clean, green powder. Um, and also, think about the standards in the, you know, the EU and Europe, a lot different than here in the U.S. So, um, but yeah, so friends, tomorrow, um, Facebook too. I'm going live again tomorrow morning. Um, I will probably have my quarantine and caffeine. I'm drinking my stress relief tea. I don't know if you guys can see this. It's kind of hard face, but... Oh, I just spilled. Yeah, I knew that would happen. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, tomorrow is usually a little bit more casual for me here. But uh, Facebook, join me again at 9 a.m. Um, this will be a weekend endeavor on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. We're coming back. I'm going to clean up my desk. And I hope all of you have an awesome, awesome Saturday. Uh, if you don't follow me on Instagram, I hope you do natural health resources. I'm going to be out in my garden a lot. So I'm going to change into my garden mode and it looks like it's really nice weather out right now. We're supposed to get rain tomorrow. Oh, the little chipmunk is eating up my feeder. They are cleaning me out. I swear the squirrel and chipmunk are going nuts. Um, so anyway, follow me on Instagram to see my weekend adventures and I hope all of you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Thanks for tuning in. Please give me the like button, share it, Facebook and YouTube, Instagram screenshot, tag me on your stories at Natural Health Resources. Thanks everybody. I will see you all later. Bye. Bye uh, Facebook. Thank you so much.